Hello and welcome back to Inside the 20. Today we will be doing my week 6 recap. If you have not seen my past recaps, please go check those out. Make sure to subscribe while you're there and also check out my Instagram and Spotify. So let's get into it. For the Sunday night primetime game, Bengals 17, Giants 7. The Bengals showed life, improving to 2 and 4. The defense dominated, snapping a 75 game streak of allowing 10 plus points. So that's definitely good. Obviously, you know, you don't want to have a 75 game streak of not allowing 10 plus points. But I mean, it is pretty hard to not let up that many points in the National Football League. BJ Hill and Trey Hendrickson led the defense with some huge plays, some sacks, especially when it mattered. They got a game ball, which is pretty cool. Burrow's 47 yard touchdown run really set the tone. Even though it was 7 0 at halftime, still, you know, you're winning by a touchdown. The Bengals could hit 500 by week 12. Coming up, they have Cleveland, then they have Philly, then they have Las Vegas, then they have Baltimore, and then they have their bye. So, the Bengals could be back up there by the time they hit their bye week. For the Giants, Daniel Jones is now 1 14 in primetime games. That's the worst in the NFL and might be worse in NFL history. I don't know, but he is one bad football player. For the Giants, um, they've managed just one touchdown in three home games. They did score a touchdown this week, but you know, one touchdown in three home games. Three home games. Like, that's wild. They hope Malik Neighbors returns and boosts the offense. Obviously, he's out with a concussion, but they're definitely hoping he can come back and just make a difference because he was shining before he got hurt. To Seattle, the Thursday night game. San Francisco 36, Seattle 24. 49ers improved to 3-3, three three, um, tied with Seattle for first place. So yeah, this will definitely be crucial if they both continue to win when they match up again. In San Francisco. For Seattle, um, the Seahawks pulled within five points but couldn't close the gap. And that's going to need to be something that they work on and practice. You know, late drive scenarios, especially in this situation against a division rival where you need to win. Defense pressured Purdy but failed um, to sack him. You want sacks if you're going to pressure him that much. After a hot start, Seattle looks average at best. They have not been playing well. They have not been looking good. So they're definitely going to need to step it up. Going to Carolina, Atlanta 38, Carolina 20. The Falcons finally won without trailing late, thanks to a big rushing day. Algier and Robinson combined for 200 rushing yards and three touchdowns. Falcons, they have looked competitive, and with Kirko chains, I think they'll be really good. For Carolina, Dalton threw two costly picks. Chubba Hubbard impressed with 92 rushing yards. He had another solid game. He hasn't been able to get over that 100-yard hump, so hopefully he can try and get it next week. To Dallas... 47, Detroit, 9 for Dallas. The Lions dominated, but they lost Aiden Hutchinson to injury. Montgomery continued his touchdown streak. How about the play call from offensive coordinator? I mean, he wasn't taking the Seahawks seriously at all. He tried throwing a touchdown to offensive tackle Taylor Decker. He ran a hook and ladder to offensive tackle Panay Sewell. He let offensive tackle Dan Skipper run routes as a wide receiver. And he also threw a flea flicker to Sam Laporta for a touchdown. Like a three-way option if you ever watched it. For Dallas, um, the Cowboys fought to 0-3 at home, all by 20 points. Dak Price got through his third red zone pick in two games, and CeeDee Lamb was a non-factor once again. Going to Denver, Chargers 23, Broncos 16. For Denver, the Broncos nearly got shut out at home for the first time ever. Rookie Bo Nix threw his first pick on his first passing attempt. Denver's offense lacks explosive plays in run game as well. So they're kind of screwed. For the Chargers, Herbert looked like his own se- old self for 237 yards on 34 attempts. And the Chargers dominated, held them scoreless for three quarters, and allowed two turnovers. Pittsburgh 32, Vegas 13. For Pittsburgh, Justin Fields ran two touchdowns in, um, but was insignificant, passing for 145 and a bad interception. Najee Harris scored the Steelers' first rushing touchdown, not from Fields. Week 6, and you don't have a rushing touchdown, that's wild. TJ Watt had a monster game, two forced fumbles, and two sacks for a loss. For Vegas, switching from Minshew to Aiden O'Connell didn't help. Two rookie fumbles with no vertical passing game hurt the Raiders a lot. Going to New Orleans, home of the Super Bowl, Tampa Bay 51, New Orleans 27. Bucks led 17-0, then gave up 20 points, then shut out the Saints in the second half. That's pretty random. You know, you're up 17, you're like, oh, we got this. 
20 unanswered points, and you're like, what just happened? And then you just go on a rampage and don't let them score again. And so Winfield had a huge fumble recovery. This was earlier in the game. Baker Mayfield was erratic, throwing three picks, but bouncing back with two touchdown passes in the second half. For New Orleans, rookie quarterback Spencer Rattler showed promise, strong first half, but struggled in the second. No duh, he didn't score. Chris Olave's injury and fumble hurt the Saints' momentum. Despite scoring 27 points in the second quarter, the Saints lost big. Big. Going to New England, Houston 41, New England 21. C.J. Stroud led the Texans to their highest point total since 2021, scoring 41 points. The defense forced four turnovers with Will Anderson shining with three sacks and a key defensive deflection that led to an interception. Joe Mixon returned from injury, racking up 102 rushing yards, a touchdown, and adding 30 more receiving yards and another touchdown. For New England, rookie quarterback Drake May shows flashes with 40-yard touchdown pass, but struggled, throwing two interceptions and losing a fumble. Pitcher's offensive line continues to be one of the worst in the league, and it's going to get really tough for Drake May. Indianapolis 20, Tennessee 17. Despite injuries for the Colts, the Colts went back to 2-1 in one of their last three games. Michael Pittman, despite a back injury, came through with a game-winning touchdown. Joe Flacco continues his streak of games with at least two passing touchdowns tying for the NFL's longest streak. Tennessee faced another tough loss as Brian Callahan has shifted to a more conservative game plan away from the one he used in Cincinnati, which was more pass. Obviously, you know he and Joe Burrow, not freaking Will Levis, who leads the league in interceptions. The run-heavy scheme will limit Will Levis the best thing you could possibly do, which only managed 95 passing yards. Probably still threw a pick. I think he did. Philly 20. Cleveland 16. AJ Brown and Devontae Smith each scored a touchdown, but the offense continues to underperform. Even with Dallas Goddard, who got me 0.0 fantasy points, and I would have beat the best team in the league. On special teams, Miss Q led to the Browns' touchdown after Miles Garrett blocked a field goal to end the half, which was huge. For Cleveland, penalties crushed the Browns' chances, especially on a game winning drive where they had pre snap penalties push them out of touchdown range. And despite the loss, the Browns extended their streak of games, not scoring 20 points by six. Going to Green Bay, Green Bay 34, Arizona 13. Jordan Love had a strong outing with 258 yards and four touchdowns. Um, Romeo Dobbs, returning from suspension, scored two touchdowns. Rookie kicker struggled, struggled again, now 11 of 16 on field goals this season. Arizona's offense sputtered going 3 out on three of their first four drives of the season. Trey McBride stepped up and Marvin Harrison left the game with a concussion, recording eight catches for 96 yards. The Cardinals were plagued by penalty, committing 13 in the game after having just 19 in the first five games. Two, Maryland, Baltimore to be exact. Baltimore 30, Washington 23. For the Ravens, Lamar Jackson had back-to-back games with 300 passing yards for the second time in his career. Zay Flowers with his second straight 100-yard game. Derrick Henry hit his milestone to passing 600 yards and eight touchdowns in his first six games with Baltimore. For Washington, the Commander's offense stayed dangerous, but their pass coverage continues to be a major issue. Baltimore averaged 7.6 yards per play, with Lamar Spring for 323 yards. With Jane Jones had a career high 269 passing yards, proving his ability to hurt defenses through the air. Going to Chicago, or actually, sorry, going to London. The second week of London games, we have a London game next week, and then I believe we have Germany game. Rookie Caleb Williams threw four touchdowns, each to Keenan Allen and Cole Komet. DeAndre Swift had 91 rushing yards and a touchdown as the Bears head in the bye week with confidence. For Jacksonville, the Jacks dropped to 1 and 5. Man, the defense couldn't pressure Caleb Williams and the defense dropped four potential touchdown passes. Gabe Davis, Christian Kirk, and rookie Brian Thomas each had consistent drops to their chances. And for our final game of the week, Bills 23, Jets 20. Um, the Bills took first place in the AFC with a 23 20 win over the New York Jets. Um, for the for the Bills, Tyler Bass had a game-winning 22-yard field goal in the fourth quarter. Um, Aaron Rodgers was intercepted on the Jets' final drive after Mike Williams slipped on the MetLife turf. And yeah, that was about it. Both teams struggled, missing a combined four kicks and committing 22 penalties for 204 yards. That's a lot of up-downs. Bills quarterback Josh Allen threw for 215 yards and two touchdowns, adding 140 yards as a team. For the Jets, Rodgers threw for 294 and two touchdowns for struggled in the red zone. They were one in four red zone touchdown drives. Um, and just think three touchdowns plus that plus two missed field goals. Greg Zerline missed two field goals, both inside the 30 yard line. Um, the Bills are four and two, and the Jets are now two and four in, for, in third place. And the game marks Jeff Jeff Urbrick's debut as the Jets interim head coach after Robert Saul was fired. And breaking news, the New York Jets are trading for star wide receiver Devontae Adams per ESPN's Adam Scheffler. 
the Raiders will get a conditional third-round pick, which will become a second if they can meet Devontae's needs and conditions. The Jets will cover the remaining $13.5 million of Adams' $17.5 salary, million dollar salary for the season. Adams is under a contract for 2025 and 2026 um, with a $36.25 million annual salary. This trade will also reunite the buddies Aaron Rodgers with Devontae Adams. Adams joins a Jets receiving group that includes Garrett Wilson, Mike Williams, Adam Lazard, Xavier Gibson, and rookie Macau- Malachi Corley. But on that note, that will wrap up my week six recap. Thank you for tuning in. Please make sure to check out my one through five recap on my YouTube page. Also check out the reels I have on my Instagram and my Spotify. So thank you for tuning in. You're awesome for watching the entire video. Thank you and see you next week.